Hello, and welcome to this seminar series where we will be exploring the applications that have been completed using microfluidic diffusional sizing on the Fluidity 1W. My name is Harris Chowdhury. I am the Content Marketing Associate for Fluidic Analytics, and today I will be taking you through an application where the binding affinity of PD1 to PDL1 was measured using the Fluidity 1W instrument. First, we will briefly cover the function and importance of this interaction before looking at the binding curve and KD value attained by the Fluidity 1W. We will discuss the KD value in relation to those measured using other biophysical methods before touching on how the instrument was able to infer the stoichiometry of the reaction. So let's take a look at the functions of these proteins. Program cell death protein 1, or PD1, is a protein located on the surface of many immune cells such as T cells and macrophages. Its role is to regulate the immune system's response to the cells of the human body by downregulating the immune system and promoting self tolerance by suppressing T cell inflammatory activity. PD1 is stimulated by PDL1, a transmembrane protein that is expressed by many cells, including muscles and nerves. In healthy tissues, the expression of PDL1 on the surface of cells activates the downstream signaling of PD1 receptor in T cells, thus inhibiting the proliferation, cytokine generation, and release of T cells. PD1 stimulation is finely balanced in healthy individuals, ensuring that the immune response is strong enough to prevent infection, but not able to attack the person's own cells. If PD1 is insufficiently stimulated, potentially due to binding too little PDL1, the suppressive control of the immune system is lifted. This leads to excess T cell activity, which in turn causes autoimmune diseases when the immune system attacks the person's own cells. Thus, PD1 acts as an immune checkpoint and guards against autoimmunity through two mechanisms. First, it promotes apoptosis of antigen-specific T cells in lymph nodes. And secondly, it reduces apoptosis in regulatory T cells. Insufficient stimulation of PD-1 is not the only situation observed in disease states. As mentioned earlier, PD-1 is a carefully balanced regulator and can be overstimulated. The most well-known example of PD-1 overstimulation is in cancer. Some tumor cells are able to overexpress PD-L1, which blocks the immune response and prevents T cells from killing these cancer cells. For this reason, PD-1 and PD-L1 inhibitors are in development as immuno-oncology therapies. These drugs work by blocking the PD-1 PD-L1 interaction and thereby releasing the immune system to attack the tumor cells. In the treatment of melanoma, for example, two anti-PD-1 antibodies have been approved by the FDA. Pembrolizumab, which trades under Keytruda, and Nivulumab, which trades under Opdivo. Additionally, three FDA-approved PD-L1 inhibitors have been available since 2017, and more are set to enter the market in the coming year. In order to initiate the search for PDL1 inhibitors, researchers must first measure the binding affinity of PD1 to PDL1 as a baseline. This interaction has been well studied using a variety of techniques, so we wanted to use our microfluidic diffusional sizing, or MDS technology, to measure the PD1 PDL1 interaction affinity in solution. The instrument we used was our Fluidity 1W, and before explaining how MDS works, I just wanted to take you through a few key features of the instrument itself. The size range the Fluidity 1W is able to measure is between 0.5 nanometers to 20 nanometers. This range covers most small molecules and dipeptides all the way up to approximately 15 megadaltons, so almost all the protein species that might be found in a cell. It is compatible with green fluorophores, including FITC, GFP, or Alexa 4A8 equivalent dyes. High sensitivity means that KD values for binding interactions in the picomolar ranges can be measured. And importantly, 
These measurements are carried out fully in solution with no surface fixing and using just 5 microliters per sample. The following video explains how microfluidic diffusional sizing works. In the Fluidity 1W, a stream of fluorescently labelled protein is introduced into the diffusion chamber alongside an auxiliary stream. These streams flow in parallel with no convective mixing. So the only way protein can migrate from one stream to the other is by diffusion. Small peptides and proteins diffuse rapidly, large proteins and aggregates slowly. At the end of the diffusion chamber, the streams are split. The quantity of protein in each stream is determined by the fluorescence from the label. The ratio of fluorescence between the two streams gives us the protein's hydrodynamic radius. The Fluidity 1W can measure this with proteins in buffer and in crude solutions like cell lysates or biological fluids because only the labelled species is detected. If we repeat the test using a mixture of labelled protein and unlabeled binding partner, we can observe the degree of binding due to the change in size. Only species including the labelled protein are detected and measured. Titrating the binding partner against the labelled protein gives a binding curve and automatically generates a KD value on screen. The hydrodynamic radius for the unbound protein and the protein complex are also automatically calculated and displayed. The figure on screen shows an equilibrium binding curve obtained by the titration of unlabeled PDL1 against a constant concentration of Alexafluor 4A8 labeled PD1. From this, the binding affinity, or KD, of the PD1 PDL1 interaction was determined to be 4 micromolar. Here, we show a comparison of binding affinity values for the interaction for a range of biophysical techniques. As you can see, microfluidic diffusional sizing on the Fluidity 1W gives a binding affinity value which is in line with those in the literature. Individual references for these values can be found on the application note on our website. Returning to our binding curve, the other data that is uniquely provided by MDS is the absolute size or hydrodynamic radius of the labelled species RH3 and the complex RH complex. This quantitative measurement allows researchers to confirm the quality of their labelled ligand through observation of the RH3 value. In this case, the observed size was consistent with the PD-1 being a glycosylated protein. The RH complex value is useful in determining reaction stoichiometry. Here, we can see the measured hydrodynamic radii of the free PD-1 and PDL-1 in red and blue respectively. Using those values, we can calculate hypothetical hydrodynamic radii for complexes of different stoichiometries. Here, the sizing obtained indicate that the complex formed a one-to-one -one binding stoichiometry rather than one of higher order. To conclude, using the Fluidity 1W, the KD of the PD1 PDL1 interaction was accurately determined and agrees with literature values derived from ITC, SPR, and MST. Crucially, because the Fluidity 1W performs absolute size measurements without having to fix proteins to surfaces, it provides key information on the quality of proteins as well as stoichiometry of protein complexes. This type of data gives researchers vital additional information about the protein complexes they are studying without the need for detailed structural information. Before I leave you, I just want to give you a brief overview of fluidic analytics. We were founded in 2013 by Professor Thomas Knowles and Andrew Lynn. Our headquarters are in Cambridge, but we have offices in Switzerland and Boston. We are developing instruments for protein analysis because we believe proteins are the key players in the biological stage and that science will benefit from new and distinct protein analytical technologies. Our first product, the Fluidity 1W, described here today, is available for purchase or demo. Thank you for listening. If you would like to discuss any possible applications or you would like to demo the Fluidity 1W in your own lab, feel free to contact one of our scientists at welcome at We hope that you will join us on the 13th of May 
where we will be taking you through a different application carried out using the Fluidity 1W. Thank you.